Okay, it's not blurry. Not blurry now. I'm not sure what happened there. Sorry about that. Okay, so the ureter. The carry the urine to the bladder for storage. And then the urethra exits the body. The urethra is found in the penis in men, and then it's a separate opening um, from the genital tract, the vagina, in females. The urethra is much shorter in females than in men, and that is why um, one of the reasons why women are more likely to get urinary tract infections. Okay, so now um, we'll look at the tubules, and we'll put those in green. So at first, the filtrate in these nephrons, you can just draw a bunch of squiggles on here, because there's lots and lots of different nephrons. And notice that they're all up in the cortex of the kidney. There are just a few of these twisty tubules that go down a little bit lower but that's kind of more rare. Most of these twisty tubules stay up in the cortex. So we can write about those right here. What you, those, all those little twisties represent uh, the tubules. And they are twisty and surrounded by paratubular capillaries. Glucose, salts, water, etc. are reabsorbed before Renal pelvis. Let's put that back. Okay, so the tubules are twisty and they're surrounded by paratubular capillaries. Glucose, salts, water, etc., are reabsorbed before the tubules reach the renal pelvis. And you can use an orange highlighter to put on here. So here's the renal pelvis. And if the fluid makes it this far, it is now has to be part of the urine. So it collects the urine and then it passes into the ureter. Now between the twisty tubules that are surrounded by uh, paratubular capillaries and the renal pelvis are the collecting ducts. And they're long and straight and they collect from the twisty tubules. Eat in each of the different lobes of the kidney, and then their fluid enters into the renal pelvis. In the collecting duct, at that point, only water can still be reabsorbed. Salts and glucose had to have been reabsorbed up in the twisty parts. So what I want to show you down here is a little schematic, sort of stretching out the capillary system. Okay, so you've got an afferent arterial and then a glomerular, but we'll just call it the glomerulus, and hopefully you get by now that that's a capillary bed. And then the efferent. And so what happens is that fluid coming through here, let's say there's a glucose and then um, 
let's say there's a white blood cell. And let's say there's a red blood cell. And let's say there's a plasma protein. Got all these different possible ingredients. And let's say there, and I'm going to use purple, there's some salt. So we've got lots of different ingredients coming through. Oh, and of course water. What color have I not used? Orange. Just put H2O. Okay, so these are, you know, some of the ingredients that you have in blood. When it comes to the glomerulus, then, the salt, oh, and let's draw a tubule. This is where the tubule starts. And loop it around, okay, like this, for the moment. It kind of opens up like that at the start. Okay, so let's say in, so some of the salt comes, you can just put Na+, plus, and then some of the salt continues on, so you're going to have a little bit that got filtered and a little bit that goes on. And then with water, you're going to have some water that gets filtered, and then you're going to have some water that continues on in the efferent arterial white blood cells should not be filtered, so they should all continue on in the efferent arterial. Same for red blood cells. They should continue on. And same with uh, plasma proteins. And then glucose. Got some glucose that is going to um, continue in the tubule and some that is going to continue in the bloodstream. And then we've got some things like, uh, might use a red dot, creatinine, and all of the creatinine should end up in the tubule and any that goes on, there should be some, I'll tell you about what happens with that. Okay, all right, so that's what happens at the site of filtration, at the glomerulus. Then we get to um, another capillary bed. It goes right next to the tubule. Okay, and then at this point, you can have things going the other direction. So see how at the filtration, everything went this way? Well, all of the glucose that got into the filtrate should go back. So put that blue dot. Remember, the blue dot is glucose. So all the glucose should be reabsorbed. And any creatinine that's still around should be completely secreted. So, you have two words to learn. Secreted means to go from the capillary to the tubule. Example, uh, oops, creatinine and maybe there was some excess um, acid. That would be another thing to put on here. Maybe some hydrogen. We'll come back to a lot of those things. So that's the process of secretion. And then there's a similar process called reabsorption, but it goes the other way. That's going to be the tubule to the capillary. 
And some examples would be glucose, water, not all of it, but a lot of it, a lot of salt. So you could put on our picture, what color did I make salt? Purple. So salt could be reabsorbed as needed. If you had pizza and you don't need to reabsorb a lot, then um, not more of it would just stay in the tubule and end up in the urine. And then water, we did that in orange, right? A lot of water gets reabsorbed. Remember, if you look up at the top part of your page, where 199 liters a day are reabsorbed, that means most of the water, most water is going to be reabsorbed. So remember the take-home messages. All of the glucose that got filtered has to go back into the paratubular capillaries. If it doesn't, that's a sign of diabetes. It means that there is so much glucose that it could not all be reabsorbed. Red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma proteins should never even be filtered. So they're at the, in the afferent arterial and in the efferent. All of the creatinine should end up in the urine. So some of it gets filtered and any that didn't get filtered will get secreted. And then after the paratubular capillaries, and the collecting duct, then anything that is still left in this goes to the renal pelvis as urine. And the capillaries then, use a blue pen, go back into the venous system. and return to the blood supply. Okay, so that's a little um, diagram of how filtration can occur and reabsorption. So you've got the process of filtration, reabsorption, and secretion.